Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, let's get straight into it. Okay, so number one, let me just start off with just want you to know that if I'm talking in any way, shape, or form weird or anything like that, it is because I got my braces tightened yesterday and so they're a little bit sore. Besides that, I may be taking a sip of this cold water because it helps my gums feel better. Um, outside of that, by the title of this video, you can tell that I will be answering questions that I've received. Um, I put a poll on my Instagram or I just asked what questions you guys wanted to know about me being on the truck with my trainer. And um, so based off those questions that I received, I'm going to answer them on this video. So I have the questions on my phone here. So if you see me looking at my phone, it's because I'm trying to get to the questions. And we're just gonna try to be as straightforward as possible, okay? So my first question is, did you have a male or a female trainer? I had a female trainer. Second question, how did the two plus one work? So for those of you who don't know, I had a two plus one experience where I had one trainer and she was training two women at a time. She would have someone on her truck for the first two weeks. It would just be her and them. And she would get them acclimated to how to drive the truck. And then she would end up getting another person added on. And she would be able to focus more attention on the new person because she'd already devoted two weeks to the prior person. And so she'll do it like that. And also the way it worked is she never drove. If you know about being in a training process with another trainer, if you guys are doing like a team driving type thing, then she would drive the shift that you weren't driving. So say if you were driving days, the trainer would normally drive nights. But because my trainer had two trainees, I drove day and then the other lady, she drove nights. Though it sort of switched up. It wasn't just she drove nights and I drove day. It would just be like that though. So the 24 hours was split by both of us. What all did you bring onto her truck? So I brought clothes, which I brought about a week's worth. And around that time, it was like late August, early September. So I brought like lighter clothes because I knew it was going to be like warm still. Um, and then I still brought a couple jackets. I brought one pair of gym shoes. I brought one pair of slides. And then I brought some shower shoes and I brought some boots. Um, just in case you know like there may be mud or if it's raining or anything like that. I also brought um, bed sheets, pillows. I brought like one pillow and a pillowcase. Um, I brought all my personal items of course. Like if you were to stay or lodge somewhere you would want your skincare, all of that. Um, and then I also brought a fanny pack because I didn't want to be carrying a purse out there. Um, and a fanny pack I still use to this day when I'm driving. It works like tremendously, so. How long were you on her truck? I was on her truck for a month. What did you do every day? So every day I drove for about 11 hours. Um, dependent on what, oh, is that you, UPS, SPS? I'm nosy. Depending on what account you're gonna be doing, they'll likely put a trainer that is doing that same account to you. They'll assign that trainer to you. I was gonna do over the road, 48 states, and so they gave me a trainer that was doing that. So with that, if she wasn't training, she would be driving 11 hours per day, and she would be driving throughout the states. So once I got onto her truck, I was doing just that. I was driving and then, um, you know, I'd likely make it to a, a place. I would back into the dock. They would either um, unload me or load me or I would just drop and hook. So that's what I did for that whole month. Did having someone watching you make you nervous? I won't lie and say I wasn't nervous. In the beginning I was, cause I remember getting in her truck the first day and I thought that she was gonna drive first or the lady was gonna drive first but as soon as she had picked me up and said all right you coming with me she was like it's your turn to drive so I was the first one to drive as soon as I got in the truck um, I so I put my stuff in the back and I hopped in the driver's seat I had never driven before I'd only trained and so I guess I would say that I have driven but it was only to test out um, and also I'd never driven her truck before she had a Peterbilt 
Um, I'd only before drove a Kenworth and a very, very old truck that I can't re recall, but that truck was manual. So I'd never driven her truck before. So it was just me figuring out how the gears worked and stuff like that. Or not the gears, but the little buttons. Where's the windshield wipers? Where's the hazard lights? Stuff like that, you know. After I would say about two days, honestly, I wasn't nervous. She wasn't like staring at me or anything like that. So, you know, I think you when you feel someone paying attention to what you're doing it could be a little bit nerve-wracking but she was someone who kept it real cool she wasn't like staring at you or making you feel uncomfortable so I appreciated that could you go home in between training I had the option to but I didn't because I wanted to go ahead and knock it out um, so I did stay the entire month but if I wanted to that was another thing if I wanted to leave and go home she wasn't gonna wait on me to, to come back, you know, because she's still driving the whole 48 states. In order for me to be dropped off, I would have had to been dropped off at the terminal that I tested in, which was Illinois. So chances are, if I come back, they were going to place me with another trainer. And I had lucked up and got her. So I didn't want to risk getting an entirely different trainer and going into a new process of trying to get acclimated to their truck and things like that. So it was just not worth it to me. I felt like I could just keep it going and, and finish. Another question, was there any drama on the truck? Uh, yes, but is there ever a time when there isn't, unfortunately? Yeah, there was. Should I make a different video about this or should I just say it now? I'm gonna try to give you like the, the quick snippet now because I truly don't want to make a video about drama. That's not what my channel is for. I'll just go ahead and say that um, there was a... <laughs> Being that I was on a truck with my trainer and another woman, that woman and my trainer had a relationship built in two weeks before I got there, right? And so they were, or I would say the trainee was used to being with just the trainer for the two weeks that she was on that truck. Um, once I got on the truck, the trainer had to invest a lot of her attention to me because I was newer. And in those moments where I was driving and the trainer was in the passenger seat, the trainee was in the back and she was asleep, or at least you would think that she was asleep. Um, and so the first, the first week or so, I would say that everything felt normal. I, I learned who they were. Everything was sort of, you know, like basic. But I would say after like week two, I started to feel a little bit of tension from the trainee. And I couldn't really tell why, but I could assume, you know, when someone starts to distance themselves from two or more people, you can start to tell it's because they feel like they, they don't fit in. And I didn't really know why she was distancing herself. But um, later I found out it was because she felt like um, the trainer was picking a favorite. And, and, and honestly, we were all grown women. I was the youngest one on the truck. I was, what, 20, 22 at the time. So <laughs> I was so confused that this was happening. Like my trainer was, I think, in her 50s. And the woman was like in her early 40s, maybe mid 40s. And I was 22, so I was really confused on how this happened. But long story short, it was like maybe the last week that I was gonna be on the truck. And I would, the way that it happened was, cause I'm trying to make this as, as quick as possible. There had been tension for about two weeks where you could feel that the, the trainee was slowly starting to really distance herself. And you, my trainer and I, you know, we spoke and we would, you know, have conversations while I was driving and then I would mainly be listening to the audio book. And so in the moments where I was listening to the audio book, she wouldn't really be speaking because she would want me to be able to listen. In times where we would be having conversations, the trainee would sort of take herself out of the conversation or not really converse with us. And I, I could feel that she was doing that. And so I would, you know, I would still leave it open for her to talk. You know, I would look at her when we were talking and stuff like that. And she just would be like, you know, nope. she started smoking more. She was smoking cigarettes as soon as we left out the truck. She would need more and more smoke breaks. So I was just, you know, a little confused. I was unsure why she was feeling that way. 
Um, one other thing though is she was struggling a little bit more when it came down to backing and other things with trucking. Uh, so I thought that it was all attributed to her feeling like she wasn't doing too well when it came down to being on the truck and driving. But then there was this one day. The way it was set up was I had, unbeknownst to any of us because we weren't paying attention to be honest, I had run out of hours on my clock, which it's really, I don't really know how to explain it to people who really don't know about hours on their truck, but there's a 70 hour clock, um, which will last you about a week. And by the end of the week, you have to do a reset. You don't always have to do a reset. There's some loopholes in that. But this time around, I needed to do a reset because I was driving a lot. Um, and so we didn't notice though. So it was anticipated that I would be driving through the night this day. And okay, one important thing that I forgot to mention is that at this point, we're parked. I don't remember why we were parked. It was something that we needed to do, but because we were parked, the time was going by without any of us driving, which meant that it pushed all of our times, all of our schedules later into the day. So me and the trainer was driving like team. And normally I would drive majority day up until like 12 o'clock in the morning. And then the trainer was driving the rest of that time, which was originally the trainee's position, but she was on her 34 hour reset. This time around, since we were parked, it pushed my driving time later into the day. And so I would have been driving nights because we have wasted all that time, but I ran out of hours. So that's what I missed and forgot to say. So I hope that makes sense. The trainee, she had already had her 34 hour reset, but this day was the day that she was getting her hours back. So my trainer was driving in place of her and I was driving my normal time. So instead of it being me switching out with the trainee, it was me switching out with the trainer. So the trainer was driving throughout the day and I was about to drive throughout the night. Now this was my first time driving throughout the night in about a week and so I, I didn't recognize that I was gonna be driving throughout the night. It was a little bit confusing the way everything was working out is really where I'm getting at. I honestly don't even know how to explain it to you. But long story short, I was, I was, it was getting hard for me to prepare to drive throughout the night because I wasn't sleepy because I slept the night before, but I was gonna do it anyway. So I wasn't complaining or nothing like that. I was just gonna make it happen. And then we found out, which my trainer found out coincidentally, that I ran out of hours and I guess how it looked to the other trainee was that I didn't want to drive at night because I didn't get any sleep. And the trainer was like, okay, well, you don't have to. And she told the other girl to drive at night anyway. But clearly that's not the case because I ran out of hours. <laughs> I couldn't drive, that would be illegal. And also, um, I wasn't complaining about it and the trainer was about to make me drive. <laughs> so it was God that I wasn't able to drive because I was going to be tired, but I was going to make it happen. Like I said, I wasn't like, oh, too bad. I was, I was like, it was just going to have to happen. But I guess the trainee was sort of upset about that. She was already asleep, by the way, because she was already driving nights. So this wasn't going to be something that was like going to snap her out of it and make her feel like she wasn't getting any sleep. She was going to have enough sleep to drive anyway. Um, so that day I was sort of excited. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm about to go to sleep for the night because I don't have to drive for another couple days. Realistically, I only got 34 hours. But anyway, so the way it was, was the trainer still had a couple more hours to drive. So she was driving and she had just let the trainee know like, hey, in a few hours, I'm about to be waking you up so that you can drive night. The trainee expected me to drive. So she was sort of annoyed but I, it was nothing that either of us could do. And so I went to bed. So around, I would say about 10 o'clock at night, I know it was dark at least, I was asleep at this point. And I heard my trainer call the trainee like, hey, da 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 da, you ready? Go ahead and wake up so we can switch out. And I heard the trainee like catch an attitude. <laughs> and the trainer, she didn't really say anything about it, but the trainee, I think she says something along the lines of, I'm tired, of, I'm sick of this crap or something like that. And so the trainer's like, whoa, just know that there was a whole argument that ensued where the trainee, she got so upset. At this point, she started saying that she heard us whispering about her 
um and that when we would think that she was sleeping she would be leaning past the curtains to hear us talking about her and she would hear us and mind you this was not the case at all I promise you there was never a point where we were whispering about this woman like I said I was 22 and these women were significantly older than me and I just didn't feel like there was at any point a reason for me to be gossiping about anybody <laughs> so I know I wasn't talking about her and the only thing that I can attribute that to is that when I was listening to my audiobooks if my trainer got a phone call she would be whispering on the phone in order for me to be able to listen to my audiobook but go off sis so the trainer is like what what are you talking about that's not the case if if we were whispering about you what do we whisper about what do we say and the trainee was like you know how when somebody get caught up and they don't really know what to say they start like trying to change the subject child it was a whole argument and by the end of it the trainer is like you about to get off my truck and the trainee started saying no i don't want to get off your truck and and i want to stay with you and all this stuff and she started apologizing at this point the trainer is pissed <laughs> and she's like getting out the truck and she's like calling people like this woman is crazy she just sat up here and accused me of talking crap about her and she's saying that she hasn't been sleeping this whole time and she's been trying to listen to our conversations and all this stuff child it was a mess either way I ended up getting off the truck before that lady. She still hadn't mastered backing up, which that's not something that I feel is, you know, everybody's different. So if you aren't comfortable with backing up, you're probably going to stay on the truck to learn and to feel more comfortable because once you're off the trainer's truck, you are on your own. So, you know, I wasn't looking at her like, mm, sucks to be you. I'm like, okay, well, you know, handle your business. And, um, but I did learn and I felt comfortable with backing up afterwards. So um, I think she also felt a little upset about the fact that she was still on the trainer's truck. But you know, it is what it is. Anyways. So was there drama on the truck? Yes, of course, yeah. Next question, how did you feel when you found out you had to be on someone's truck for a month or more? At first I felt concerned because I just didn't really know what to expect. And then I heard horror stories. So I've heard horror stories about people being disgusting. You know, because that's their living quarters. So if if that's where they live at, you're about to see the, the nitty gritty. And, and I've heard about people being disgusting, like sneezing and touching the steering wheel and all that crap. And you got to sit there after them and drive in their domain. That's gross. You still also have to live with them. Um, I'd also heard about people being super disrespectful or keeping you on a truck longer because because they're the trainer they have to mark off things off their list to say okay this person is good this person still isn't good or whatever and they determine how long you stay on their truck um, also I've heard of people just kicking you off for things that you know may have been just a misunderstanding and stuff like that one of my friends they got kicked off of three different trainers trucks um, so that, that sucks. I didn't want to be a part of any of that, so I was definitely praying like, please don't let me get on the trainer's truck and, and end up with any of those issues. Another question, did y'all do anything fun? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't classify it as fun. Like we weren't out there skating or nothing, but the first day that I got on her truck, before I had to drive, she, we took a break. So we stayed in Illinois for about a day, I think. Um, and I just know that we went to a casino. Now, we didn't go to gamble or nothing. We just went to the buffet and we ate there, which was pretty cool because she paid and that was dope also. <laughs> um, and then we've also been to restaurants, um, I think in Florida, which was pretty cool. We met her husband and you know we chilled out there for a little bit. I think there was a point in time where we stopped because it was very, very bad wind. And so she hooked up her tablet and we watched movies and ate like Chinese food. It, that was cool. I really enjoyed that. And then of course, it wasn't that hard talking with her. We had a good time just talking in general. And um, she was very funny, so yeah. 
And then that goes into the next question, was your trainer cool? And yes, she was. Now I will admit in the beginning, like the first couple of days, um, because she didn't know me and I didn't really know her, it was a little bit rocky because I can recall I was trying to back up in an area where I had to do a blind backing and she was out there and I had never blind backed before. And I had never heard of the term bending your fairings. And so I had went and tried to hard cut my turn and she had noticed that I had bent the fairings. And so she was like, oh, and I'm over here like, who are you yelling at? Like, and so that had sort of rubbed me the wrong way. Cause it's like, I didn't even know that that was an issue. I didn't even know that there was a such thing as bending your fairings. But um, after that, we ended up laughing about it later. And from there, she was so cool. She always paid for our food, which I would be like, no, you don't have to, but she would always beat us to it. She was the one who introduced me to audiobooks. I had never listened to audiobooks for real before. I think I probably did a couple times, but it wasn't like hardcore. But she had introduced me to it and she had this series on her tablet. And so she had it where um, the trainee before me, she was listening to this series that, she, that um, the trainer had introduced her to. And so once I got onto the truck, they had casually brought it up like, yeah, we'd be listening to this series. Um, and so I was like, for real? Well, I want to listen to it, too. So, you know, we would all take turns when the person was driving. They would listen to the time mark where they were at in the series and then when that person stopped driving for the day the other person would go and listen to their time mark of where they were listening to when we were listening to the same series so it was real dope um i enjoyed it and she was so cool for that because it really helped the time blow by also she sort of reminded me of my grandmother um she was younger than my grandmother but she her who she was like how she interacted with us it was sort of like friend slash grandmother she was so cool so yeah another question did anything crazy happen yeah we almost died on a mountain we got in an accident which both of those things are explained in the video that i'll be linking in my description box and then also that ridiculous argument <laughs> so uh yeah a few crazy things did happen how did y'all shower we showered at truck stops or at the terminal did you get homesick? Not really. I'll be honest. I, I didn't really feel homesick. I think the only thing that sort of made me feel a little bit homesick is that I would get calls like, hey, when you're going to be back home from people that wanted to see me and it'd be like, uh, you know, that made it a, that made it feel a little worse because they're like expecting me. And I'm like, well, it depends on when my trainer lets me off the truck. So did you get impatient living on the truck with them? Um, actually, no. It became really routine. It's honestly something that you get used to. It didn't bother me. I didn't mind it. Were there any hygiene issues on a truck? No, but I did hear some horror stories about some hygiene issues, um, namely from my trainer. She was telling me about how um, they was some lady had peed on her truck on accident, another lady had pooped on her truck on accident. I've heard some stories, okay? How long did it take you to feel comfortable driving? About one day. Um, you're driving for like 11 hours. And in the midst of that one day, it, I got used to it. Um, another question, what kept you from being bored? Audiobooks. Um, I, it was to the point where I got excited whenever it was my turn to drive. Like honestly, audiobooks is what saved me. So I was so glad that she had um, introduced me to it. Another question, what was the worst part? The drama. The drama was the worst the, the worst part for me. Um, just the fact that after a while it started to feel tense in the truck made me uncomfortable. How did you guys eat? Um, I don't really know what that question is really saying, but we ate out almost every day, which is so unhealthy, but we only had a microwave in the truck, so um, it was no way to really cook. How did y'all fit all y'all stuff in there? Um, well, she asked us to bring two Two, ba two bags in and try not to bring super heavy bags. And so we bungee corded our bags into random spots. Like I think my bag was in one cabinet and then another bag was underneath the bed, the bunk bed. So just like that. But that was the last question. So 
Um, if you guys have any more questions about my experience or anything of that sort, definitely leave it down in the comments below. And also, um, if you guys have any more recommendations of videos to watch or videos that you want me to make, definitely let me know as well. So I love you guys so much. I really appreciate all of your support and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye.